Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today I would like to go through a bit of a journey of this incredibly diverse world in order to examine all of the different races that exist within One Piece. It's pretty easy to forget because we spent literal decades slowly introducing and exploring these various tribes, but there are some pretty crazy and amazing brands of life in One Piece, although for this video I will be focusing exclusively on humanoid life. Doing all of the different types of creatures would be an even more massive undertaking, which I'm sure we'll get to one day, but before we get into that, it's time to play a quick round of Fishman or Merfolk. A very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. I am going to present you with a, a, a modified straw hat, and it's going to be your job to guess whether they are a Fishman or a Merfolk. The way to tell being whether they have legs or whether they have a tail. Legs for Fishman, tail for Merfolk. And if you guess incorrectly, then your glorious punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review. And if you do guess correctly, then I suppose you can have a job at an aquarium, hooray. So here is our aquatic Frankie. But I ask you this, is Frankie a Fishman or a Merfolk. Make your decision now and we will reveal the answer in three, two, one, bam. As it turns out, Frankie is a merman. If you guess Fishman, then hit that super Frankie button and please do say hi in the comments below if you are new to the Grand Fleet, welcome. But to begin going through all of our races, we are going to start with stock standard humans. These are by far the most common personoid existence on the planet, coming equipped with all of the boring human things that you and I are familiar with in real life. However, to call humans strictly stock standard is actually a bit of a mistake on my part because they can vary quite greatly in size and appearance. For example, Charlotte Lynn Lindis despite being almost 10 meters tall, is entirely human. Her parents were both more standard sized humans and Lin Lin is just massive for reasons. But we don't have to go quite that far either because sometimes humans can just be absurdly tall like all of the admirals. Or some humans that just present unexplained yet highly distinguishable features like Hannibal, who has these ever intriguing eyebrow horn things. Or humans like Masara, who just plain resembles an ape. Or even characters like Mary, who has lamb horns, which are not ornamental by the way. They've grown with him since childhood as we saw in chapter zero. Basically though, humans in One Piece have access to a far larger pool of genetic variants, some of which could potentially be explained by interspecies breeding with some of the other races of the world, some of, but not all. So I guess just bear in mind that the classification of a human in this series is far further reaching than it might be in other works. Now, just like in the real world, humans come in a variety of different tribes and societies, some of which could be quite highly advanced, such as the manufacturing powerhouse of Water 7, and others can be a bit more archaic like the Kuja tribe of Amazon Lily. The greatest tribe differences between humans though comes in the form of the world nobles, a group that I am highly tempted to classify as their own race, which I suppose they would actually prefer because the majority of the world nobles do believe that they are quite literal gods. In reality, they are an offshoot of humanity, descendants of the 20 kingdoms who isolated themselves on the Holy Land of Marjois, and after almost a thousand years of inbreeding have become, how shall we say, quite visually distinct. And at this point, while they do have a common ancestry, I would say that the world nobles have pushed the undesirable bounds of evolution to the point where they have pretty much become their own race. But next up, we are going to take a dive 10,000 meters below the surface to the realm of the merfolk. And here we have fairly standard mermaidian depictions of life, as all merfolk possess the upper bodies of a human and the lower bodies of a type of fish thing. Essentially being fish tails, that is. However, they come with quite a variety of lower body options, such as the Minister of the Right, who features the lower body of a seahorse or hyozo, who has the lower body of a blue ringed octopus. And very notably, female merfolk, being mermaids, gain a special ability to split their tail when they turn 30. And this allows them to walk on land and even mimic humans with the assistance of pants, as was proudly displayed by Kokoro, the very first mermaid the Straw Hats met. However, mermen do not receive this ability at any stage in their lives. And just as a matter of class, merfolk is seen as the upper echelon of sea life. And in fact, all of Fishman Island is ruled over by a family of merfolk helmed by King Neptune. And royal mermaids are also particularly important because the power of the ancient weapon Poseidon gets passed through them, although it's not always active. Currently, it resides within Princess Shira Hoshi, and it is, it's very active. But moving to Fishman, this race sees a more solid blend of humanoid and aquatic characteristics. Fishmen come equipped with legs, which is the primary reason why they are much more commonly seen on the surface than merfolk. Fishmen and merfolk are not so far removed from each other though, and they are more than capable of breeding, which will result in an equal chance of a fishman or merfolk child. Fishmen can also breed with humans as well, as seen in human fishman hybrids such as Dellinger. However, fishmen represent a distinct underclass of the sea, and in fact, the world at large. Fishmen tend to live in the far more 
more underprivileged areas of Fishman Island, and on the surface, Fishman have a history of being persecuted by humans and even being used as slaves. Although this was mostly a practice used by the world nobles rather than humanity at large, and I think they also enslaved just about every race, so Fishman are nothing particularly special here. However, they do have a tendency of being looked down upon more than say merfolk or I think, yeah, anyone else that we're about to explore. And as a result, humans and Fishman have a strained relationship at best. Heading back to the surface now, and we have the largest humanoid creatures in One Piece represented by the giants. And a lot of these guys are every bit as you would imagine a classic giant to be. They are large, loud, and proud. However, the only organized society of giants that we are currently aware of would be those that reside on the island of Elbaf. And these giants are modeled quite heavily on Scandinavian Viking culture. And they are without a doubt the most powerful race on the planet. And should an army of giants ever resurface, then there would be little that humanity or any other race could do to stop them. In fact, even a small cohort of giant pirates led by Dorian Broggy were enough to thoroughly terrorize the seas back in their day. It is necessary to state though that not all giants are necessarily from Elbaf. And in the series, we have been exposed to characters like Jaguar de Sol, Morley, and Samla Wolf, who very much present themselves as the exact opposite of an Elbafian giant. Not to mention giants like the Eddie Cool Brothers, who are very biologically distinct from their Elbafian cousins. And of course, it is more than worth mentioning that we have ancient giants who are by far the largest and most demonic looking of all of the things in One Piece. And quite famously, both Oars and Oars Jr. were members of this class of giant. And then in terms of interspecies breeding, we have only seen one example of a giant fishman hybrid, which is known as a Wotan. And currently the only canon Wotan we know of is Big Pan, who was a member of the Foxy Pirates. And he participated in the Davy Back fight, although there was another who appeared in the 3D 2i special named Sebastian. But despite his fun bow tie, he is not canon. Going even higher now, it's time to explore the sky people. And these guys are actually very exciting because they did not originate from this planet. That's right, each and every sky citizen we see in the series is technically an alien who came to the One Piece planet from the moon or one of the moons. There's quite a few, we think. And amongst them were three different subsets, the first of which would be the Birkins. And in fact, there's even an ancient city on the moon named Birka. But for example, all of the primary antagonists in the Skypea arc are Birkins, even Enel, even though he doesn't have wings, which is interesting actually. But despite Enel having destroyed the settled Sky Island of Birka, other members of this tribe do still exist, such as Mad Monk Rouge and even Haradas, the primary caretaker of the Sky Island with area. And interestingly, he also has not been shown to have wings as of yet, just like Enel. Now, the second of these three tribes would be the Skypeans, who came to the planet and settled on Angel Island, which would later be expanded into Skypea, which occurred after half of a Blue Sea Island was blown up there via the knock-up stream. The Skypeans are probably best known for their technical prowess though, as they are the ones responsible for developing dial technology and all sorts of stuff simply designed to make daily life easier. And finally, we have the Shandians, who after their journey from the moon did not elect to land on a Sky Island, and instead they went all the way down to the Blue Sea, settling on an island that would become known as Jaya. The Shandians were and still are a proud warrior tribe who might seem a bit primitive by modern standards, but at one stage they were actually considered to be one of the most powerful societies in the entire world. And this may be because the Shandians do have a connection to the elusive ancient kingdom, and they were even given a poneglyph to take care of. This was all prior to the Void Century though, and eventually the 20 kingdoms would come together to crush the Shandians during this time. And rather ironically, roughly 400 years prior to the current timeline, the Shandians were all blasted up into the sky via the knock-up stream, plonking them right next to their Skypean cousins, at which point a great war would break out with the Skypeans who immediately tried to claim this new skybound land. And that war has only recently come to a conclusion actually. After the defeat of Enel, the Skypeans and the Shandians have now found peace and are working together for the first time since their ancestors did on the moon. All right, next up we have the comparatively small race being the Ming tribe, small in terms of numbers, less so size. And Minks are extraordinarily rare to see in the One Piece world because they mostly live on an isolated phantom island, making it nigh on impossible to find them. And in addition to that, they very rarely venture into the outside world. Similar to Fishman, I suppose, Minks are humanoids with animalistic traits, quite specifically mammalian. In fact, I don't think we've seen a Mink thus far who was not covered in fur and classified as a mammal. These guys can be pretty scary though, because they have at least two species exclusive techniques, one of which is Electro, allowing them to perform electric shock-based attacks generated from their bodies. And the other is the much, much, much more terrifying Sulong form. In a very werewolf kind of manner, when a mink gazes at a full moon for too long, they will transform into shockingly powerful creatures, which are considered to be the true form of the mink tribe. Although this incarnation is very difficult to control and can lead many inexperienced minks to cause themselves severe exhaustion or even death. The mink tribe also have a close relationship with one particular society of humans, being the residents of Wano, or more specifically the Kozuki clan. At this stage, it's not quite clear how this originally came about, but all of the minks seem to have a profound sense of loyalty to the Kozuki 
Shinsuke clan. And then we move to dwarves, who I would describe as more fairy style creatures. These are the smallest brands of humanoids on the planet. However, despite that, they are far stronger and faster than your average human. So much stronger and faster, actually. In fact, a single dwarf is capable of destroying an entire man-made building and fast enough for them to vanish in the blink of an eye. As such, dwarves are highly valued as slaves and have a rather unfortunate history as such, particularly the Tontata tribe, whose home is on Green Bit. Because roughly 900 years ago, the Don Quixote King of Dressrosa enslaved their tribe, and in more modern times, his descendant, Don Quixote Dol Flamingo, did exactly the same. And so far, the only dwarves we've seen in One Piece are members of the Tontata tribe, although there is a half-human, half-dwarf member of the Big Mom Pirates named Charlotte Normand. Now, getting a bit weirder, we have a couple of distinctive races that's born seemingly from humans, and basically they take one bodily feature and just elongate it, resulting in the long arm, long leg, and snake neck tribes respectively. With the long arm tribe, they're pretty cool because their arms actually feature an extra joint in them, although the long leg and snake neck tribes just have much longer body parts than usual. Oh, and notably, there are very hostile relations between the long arm and long leg tribes specifically, a conflict that has apparently spanned well over a thousand years at this point, although we have yet to really delve into either of them. In addition to all of this though, the One Piece world has some rather mysterious and currently unidentified races. The most prominent of which would be the Three-Eyed Tribe, the only member we currently know of being Charlotte Pudding. They are allegedly quite special though and have the power to achieve an awakening with their third eye, thus allowing them to hear the voice of all things, or maybe see the voice of all things, because it's a bit weird to hear with your eyes, but none of this has been confirmed, so you do you. In more recent times, we were also exposed to King the Wildfire, who is a member of a currently unknown race, but he does appear to be the bird equivalent of a fishman or a mink, having a standard pair of giant black wings, and uh, for some reason, he's also capable of generating a fire on his back at all times. I don't know why. And another funky mystery race that has been spotted is a Kinokobito, which seem to be humanoids with this mushroom sort of body and four, count them, four legs. And they do definitely exist because the one we've seen was captured in Monto's books, although we still have yet to see or hear anything about them beyond this passing reference. And we could probably go on for quite a while exploring unique individuals in the series. For example, Chopper might technically constitute his own race at this point, or we could even dive into artificial intelligence such as the Pacifista or Automata. But for now, this is a solid rundown of every known race present in the One Piece world. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.